So to make our fibrin sutures, we co-extrude co fibrinogen and thrombin through this uh, syringe right here. And this post here we attach to this piece here. And this is essentially a three-axis machine which allows it to go back and forth and makes lines of fibrin, essentially a, a thread. And then we take that thread and we put a surgical needle on the end of it to deliver to the heart. And so here we need to keep track of the lot of fibrinogen we use, the lot of uh, uh, thrombin we use, when these sutures are made, when they're bundled. So after we've made the fibrin uh, suture, we then have to add a needle onto it. And so we use this device here to crimp a needle on the end of the suture. And so what you see right here is the fibrin suture attached to the surgical needle. We need to keep track of the size of the surgical needle and the type of the surgical needle. And so this here is a uh, 3 8 uh, circle uh, reverse cutting needle that we need to keep track of here. So after we've sterilized the suture and we keep track of what, fibrin, uh, what fibrinogen and thrombin we've used to make the suture from, we then bring it over here where we add the cells. So we'll take the cells out of the incubator over here and we'll keep track of the passage number of the cells, the lot number of the cells, and then how many cells we actually use, and we'll add them into this little tube in here. We'll do that inside the sterile environment inside this biosafety cabinet. We'll then take that out, put this tube into a conical tube, and rotate it inside our incubator, which is right here. And so again, we need to keep track of the number of cells that we've added, the volume of cells we've added, and how long we incubate those cells in the sleeve here. So after we've fixed the hearts, we take them over here, we put them in essentially wax, and this here is an image of a heart. This is a cross-section of a heart that you can see in there. And then we'll take this tissue block and we'll put it in this machine here, and this machine here cuts sections of the tissue. And so as this goes up and down, there's a razor blade in here, and so it cuts a fine uh, section of that heart. In this case here, it's about five microns thick. Um, we'll then take those sections and we'll put them on a slide like this here. And so you can see there are four sections of the heart on that slide there. And then through a series of stains, we'll stain them for collagen and cellular material. And we have a, what we call a trichrome, trichrome stain slide right here. Then we need to image this slide underneath the microscope. And so we'll take this over to the microscope room. So after we've taken the tissue sections and we've stained them for different uh, proteins, for example, actinin, or if we've looked at our quantum dot markers, we then take them over here to the microscope where we take images of them with our, our camera system here. And we can use different objectives, 5X, 10X, 20X objective, for example. And we'll take images of the green channel the red channel, the blue channel, and then combine them together. So what you see here is a combination of those three separate images all put together in one image so we can see where the cells are, the quantum dot loaded cells, which are in red, and the various proteins, which are here are shown in blue. And so in this one image here is actually constructed from three raw images. And so we need to know what experiment number, what section number, if it was from the apex or the base, and which um, channel and, and protein we stained for in that image there. Mm -hmm.